Hi, I'm Amy Baudet from the Alt E Store. Thank you for watching our video series. This second video is an introduction to solar electric systems. If you missed our first video, I recommend you go back and watch the first in the series called Introduction to Electricity Basics. We're going to go through the five different types of solar electric systems PV direct, grid tied, off grid, grid tied with battery backup, and finally a hybrid system. We'll discuss the pros and cons of each type and briefly cover the basic equipment needed for each type. Let's start with the different types of photovoltaic or PV systems. PV direct systems are the most basic type. The most common one is solar water pumping for remote irrigation, watering livestock, or pumping from a well or stream to a cistern. This picture is of a community garden in Massachusetts that was near a river. They were able to pump water out of the river into tanks to allow people to water their garden plot. A PV direct system can consist of as few as two components, the solar panel and the device being powered, like a pump or fan. There is often a controller or a linear current booster between the two, and some fuses and breakers, but not much more than that. It's a very basic system where the solar panels make the power and the pump uses what it can get. When the sun is bright and the panel is making more power, the pump will pump faster than when it is overcast or early morning or late afternoon. The key here is to use the power when you have it and not need it when the sun isn't available. Generally, in the example of a pump, You'll be pumping to a tank or cistern during the day, allowing you to use the water all day and night without having to utilize batteries. It's easier to store water than power. The obvious advantage of a PV direct system is its simplicity. When the sun shines, the device runs. When it's not shining, the device doesn't run. It's generally fairly easy to install and you don't have the expense and hassles of batteries. When you are choosing a PV direct system, you need to determine what the DC voltage the device runs on. It must be DC device. You can't just plug an AC device into a solar panel instead of into the wall socket. You need to know how much power your device needs. The specs will generally give you this information. Remember, if it only gives you volts and amps, you can calculate the watts by multiplying volts and amps together. You also need to consider how and where you want the panel mounted. Will you be mounting it on a shed roof or installing it on the side of a pole? The next system to discuss is a grid tied system. Most residential systems these days are grid tied. This provides some of your power, selling any extra back to the electric company during the day and buying it back at night as needed. Even if you don't have extra to sell, Throughout the day, your power meter will be spinning slower as you buy less from the grid as you are using your own power that you've generated. Don't let anyone tell you that solar only works in southern deserts. This photo was taken in Maine, where solar is extremely popular and productive. Little known secret, solar panels love the cold weather. In a grid-tied system, the solar panels are wired through fuses to a grid-tied inverter. The inverter is wired to a new breaker in your main AC panel. The electric company may require you switch out your power meter to a bi-directional meter, which can spin backwards when selling power and forward when buying. This is known as net metering. The nice thing about a grid-tied system is that it will reduce your electric bill by making some of the power you use. You don't need to make all of your power although you can if you want to and have the space and budget to do so. But most people just get a system big enough to reduce their bill, but not eliminate it. The downside to a straight grid-tied system is that if the grid goes out, so will your house's power. Even if it's a beautiful sunny day, your system is required by law to turn off. This is because the inverter is connected directly to the grid. If the grid is out, the linemen will be out there working on restoring power. They are not expecting there to be any power on the lines. If your system was still up, you run the risk of electrocuting them. When deciding on a grid-tied system, there are several decisions. First, make sure your electric company supports net metering 
and if they have any specific rules you need to follow other than turning off when the grid goes out. Then find out how much power you currently use by reading your electric bill. How many kilowatt hours do you currently use each month? You need to decide what percentage you want to offset and that can be determined by how much money you want to spend or how much space you have available on the roof for your panels. But that ties in nicely to the next question. Where do you want your panels? If you're putting them on the roof, what kind of shingles does it have? And are they in good shape? If you need a new roof within the next 10 years, get it replaced before installing the panels. Now remember that they don't have to be on your roof if you have space in your yard or field for a ground or pole mounted system. Carports with a roof made of solar panels are becoming more common. Here's a great example of a parking lot at REI in Framingham, Mass. The carport provides a sheltered parking spot for customers as well as generating electricity for the store. That's a win-win. Solar power got its start as a way to power a remote location that doesn't have access to the power grid, like this lighthouse on Thatcher Island, Massachusetts. Many seasonal camps, monitoring systems, and home and remote locations get all or most of their power from solar. Since you don't have the grid available for backup if needed, you need to carefully plan your system. Off-grid systems consist of the solar panels, the charge controller, which manages charging the batteries, the battery bank, and if AC devices are used, an inverter to convert the DC power from the batteries to AC like you have available in the wall sockets. Many off-grid systems have a backup power source like a generator for times when the sun is not providing enough power for your needs. Unlike a grid-tied system where you can just base a system on how much power you want to offset, an off-grid system needs to provide all of your power. With an off-grid system, you need to take a look at what you are powering and how long you need to power it. Going off-grid often takes changes to your lifestyle. It's not as simple as saying, I'm tired of paying the electric company, I'm taking the whole house off-grid. You have to figure worst case scenarios. Winter time, with little to no sun for days. Unless you are in a climate that has long sunny days all year round, most people who are doing a year-round off-grid system will have a generator available to pitch in for the winter. I'm not going to get into all the math to determine what size system you need in this video. I will cover it in a video later in the series. But in order for us to help you size your system, you need to be able to tell us how much power you need and for how long. The first step to determining the size of your off-grid system is to do a loads list. You can't just say it's an average size system. Who's average? There is no such thing as an average off-grid system. Without knowing your exact loads, you will end up either buying a system that's too small and won't give you enough power, or paying too much for a system that's too big. A loads list lists out the exact amount of devices you'll be running, how much power they draw, how long a day they will run, and if they have a high surge that needs to be taken into consideration. Additionally, we need to know which devices may potentially be on at the same time. While you can generally control when you turn on a light, you have little control over when a well pump may kick on or when your fridge compressor turns on. There's a handy loads list calculator on the Alt-E website that can help you generate this list. Once you have an accurate loads list, you can go to our off-grid calculator to figure out what size solar system you need. When calculating the size of the system, one of the questions asked is how many days do you want to run off your battery bank without sun or a generator? Remember that every day added to this increases the most expensive part of your system, the batteries. So plan on enough storage, but not too much. As you can see, sizing an off-grid system is a delicate balance. With the increase of power outages due to an aging power infrastructure and increase in severity and frequency of storms, grid-tied battery backup systems are becoming increasingly popular. A grid-tied battery backup system is the best of both worlds. You don't have to generate all of your power. You can offset some of your power needs with the solar and buy the rest from the grid. When the grid does go out, 
your system will automatically switch over to powering just the devices connected to your critical loads panel. The rest of your house will go out. When designing this system, you decide what to have running when the grid goes out. Your fridge, freezer, well pump, furnace fan, maybe a single outlet for lights or charging your phones. This photo is a ground-mounted system at my coworker's house in Colorado. Note the deer taking shelter in the shade, an unexpected additional benefit. In a grid-tied battery backup system, you have your solar panels charging your battery bank. The inverter is connected to both the main breaker panel, which is in turn connected to the grid, as well as to your critical loads panel, which is isolated from the grid. When the grid is up, the solar keeps the batteries topped off and then provides some power to the house, both to items connected to the critical loads panel and to the main breaker box. The grid provides any additional power needed. If you are generating more power than you need, the inverter sells the extra power back to the grid, spinning your meter backwards. But when the grid goes out, the inverter immediately disconnects itself from the grid and will provide power only to the critical loads panel. During the day, the solar will continue to generate electricity to recharge your batteries. But at night, you'll be running solely on the batteries. These systems also have the option of also having a generator to charge the batteries when needed. The advantage of this over just a generator system without a battery bank is, you can just briefly turn on the generator to charge the batteries and then turn it off. This saves you fuel and allows you to silently run the critical loads at night. When selecting a grid-tied battery backup system, you have to ask yourself all of the same questions as with both grid-tied and the off-grid systems. Remember that you now have the added expense of batteries, so it will be a more expensive system than just a straight grid-tied. You'll also have to do a loads list on your critical loads to determine the correct battery bank and minimum size solar array to recharge your batteries during a power outage. Finally, we'll briefly cover a hybrid system where in addition to solar, you have another power source, such as a wind turbine or micro hydro from a river. The advantage of these systems is that generally, when the sun power is at its lowest, that's usually when the wind is blowing hard or the river is flowing fast. Sailors who cruise offshore will often have both solar and wind to provide power for their battery bank. Most turbines will have their own controller to manage charging the battery bank. You would wire it in parallel with the solar charge controller, so be sure to get both solar and turbine to support the same size battery bank. Since solar charge controllers prevent overcharging by disconnecting the solar when the battery bank is full, you can't use the same controller to also control the turbine. Unlike solar, a turbine can spin itself out of control to the point of self-destruction if it doesn't have a place to put the power it is generating. So be sure to use a controller designed for that turbine. A hybrid system can be very useful in locations that don't have good sun in the winter. The two technologies can complement each other quite nicely. Okay, so you're sold. That's fabulous. Give us a call at Alt Store and let us help you design your system. But before you call, make sure you have the following information available for us. Which type of system do you need? Grid tied? With or without battery backup? How much power do you need to generate and store? And what's your budget look like? Do you have a sunny spot available for your panels? Are there any special requirements you have? Any particular brand you like or only want made in the USA? When are you planning on installing? With this information, we can happily get you started on your way to solar living. Altistore has got a bunch of calculators available, including the load calculator, on-grid calculator, and off-grid calculator. We also have some package systems that we've already designed as a starting point, allowing you to customize them for your particular needs. Check out more of our webinar series on our website. We've got a team of highly trained technical sales reps available to help you plan your system. Give us a call. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you check out our website, altstore.com, where we are making renewable doable.